and, and because I, I think it would be more fun to be courageous more of the time because cowardliness in my being kind of contracts and, and I, so I, so this is, I mean, I'm making all this up, but, but it is actually possible that, that we are on this, we have, you were talking about multiple parallels when I first came in here, that we are right at that, where our God wouldn't let this planet get destroyed by our stupidity. It already has been destroyed many, 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 many times over in parallel realities. It, because God allows all things. Yes, thank you. So I'm asking questions. <laughs> so which part do you wish to experience? Which version? Well, I want to come here and be one of the many that help save our planet, our beautiful You can planet. create that illusion, but in a sense, we should realize that there is many versions that have already been destroyed, and there's endless versions that will never be destroyed, and we never help one version become the other. We simply move from one version to the other. Does that make sense? One version will always be one version. Destroyed planet Earth is not going to be not destroyed planet Earth. That is its own frame, its own possibility of infinity. There is endless possibilities that are not destroyed, that prosper, that have different experiences, depending on the definition of prosper. So it's up to you. You can generate the illusion, which is beautiful, and I'm not taking that away from you. Uh, and in a sense, I'm doing the same thing. We're in the same field of illusion, of deluding ourselves, to think that we're helping the planet. But that's a beautiful thing. We're not actually helping the planet so much. It's, it's a story we all collectively agree to play out because the story is what gives us a sense of relevance. It's what gives us a growth experience. It's what makes us learn about the universe, how creation works, and who we are as consciousness. So we use as a permission slip the idea that there is a planet Earth to either save or not save. But in a sense, that's not actually true. Yes, the illusion is generated in our collective that there is a planet that may or may not need some aid and assistance in waking up and in becoming more naturally realigned with itself and all that. But you have to understand that that is an illusion that we play out by connecting all these parallel realities in a certain order. Every moment will always remain where it is. So as long as you know it's an illusion, you can have even more fun with it. You won't take it too seriously, because if you take it too seriously, you will dwindle down the black hole of, not the positive black hole, but the black hole of um, negativity. And you will shift yourself into a vibratory state where you will perceive a configuration of the universe that is not as you would like it to see. So in order to actually save the planet or generate the illusory experience of where you have saved the planet, you have to be willing to take that journey lightly. Because if you take your journey yeah too seriously yeah. it's a negative energy negative energy yeah. attracts negative realities and yeah. you'll attract the opposite of what you actually prefer right i'm, I'm fairly confident earth the earth is a living being and that it will survive oh, yeah. no matter what the seven billion of us decide collectively well we have already <clears throat> decided upon infinite different versions you see it's nothing new is going to happen oh do you understand okay that? there's nothing new under this Sun or the future the already exists yeah. now and infinite futures exist infinite parallel futures exist right on so we're just creating one right now you and i yes and everybody here yes there's and infinite 2000 live stream there's yeah. infinite 2050s that all have played out in very different ways that already coexist right now you're simply choosing this particular year and timeline moment yeah and parallel to this particular year timeline moment, there's infinite other versions of that same particular timeline moment, but completely different, 100% different universes. So everything has already happened. What's new is your relationship to these things that already exist. So the way you generate your timeline through these infinite parallel realities is what makes creation expand. So what's really interesting is how do you relate to yourself and how do you relate to the permission slip of planet Earth? and the collective and the 7 billion people. What does that mean to you? How do you respond to that? And what do you choose to shift into after this moment and after this moment and why? And what do you learn from that? And who do you become as a result of that contrast? What do you generate? What type of preference will you generate and then choose to manifest? That is what is cutting out, just the relationship. We don't really have to worry about the state of the configuration of the universe because there's infinite universes and they will always be as they are in that universe. We can't change that because that's a snapshot. Every nanosecond is another configuration of the universe. And there's infinite parallel ones that look completely different. So you can never change something structurally. You can only shift 
into a different alternate reality that then appears structurally different because it is a completely different reality. You have not changed the previous reality. You have moved yourself through relationship consciousness into another type of configuration of the universe. I just needed to wake myself up tonight because I was falling asleep and I wanted to get some energy and I, and I feel uh, you really helped me. Um, I got some energy now. <laughs> uh, so so in, my, in my universe there are like zillions of races and, and the earth itself, the living being we call earth, is, is, a, is a portal. Mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and it's a nice vacation spot for some, and others probably are going to fight over this planet or whatever they need to do. And, but I get to choose each and every moment where I put my attention. Yes. And that is what is cutting edge. So when we get too absorbed, which is fine, because that's another way to build a relationship. So in a sense, even that is cutting edge. But when we place too much emphasis on the external world and saving the external world, we're forgetting the fact that that external world will never change. It exists for its own purpose, just like one floor of consciousness exists for its own purpose and will always remain available to whatever consciousness wants to visit there. There has to be infinite options for these infinite diversifications of the overall consciousness, each with its own sense of I am, to now navigate through these infinite options in their own infinitely unique pattern or order. That's how we generate multiple timelines. Each I am generates its own timeline by sifting through this timeless now that coexistently holds all potential universes. The way you move through that, through your relationship, through your vibration, through your frequency, through your state of being, through your state of consciousness, is what makes your journey add to the expansion of consciousness, to the knowledge of self. You're not ever changing what you see. You're changing into another thing that you're then seeing. That other thing already existed as well. Short side question. Is it, his... is it the human consciousness that, consciousness that allows us to move? To move into different realities? If these realities exist and they're static, yes, how are we able to not be static? We are, but we're moving through parallel realities where the body is in a different position. So you are never changing your body either. You're changing the body that you embody. It's a completely different body every nanosecond. This body, let's say we could freeze this moment to one parallel reality, just staying in one parallel reality, not moving to the next. What we'd experience is everything being absolutely frozen in one configuration of energy. And you'd see that the environment and the body are both the environment. Your body is part of that reality. When you shift your consciousness, you're shifting into another reality where the body is slightly different and the plant over there is slightly different and the stars are aligned slightly different. It's a different parallel reality that comes with a different body. The body belongs to that reality, not to you. You're not a body inside of a reality. The reality is inside of that. The body is inseparable from the reality that you choose as a slide that moves through your consciousness. You are consciousness. You're not the body. You're choosing a particular vehicle to express yourself through. Does that make sense? Yeah. And the body will always be part of this particular universe that you're now embodying and now embodying and now embodying. You've never been the body. You've only projected it into the light of your consciousness. The more aware you are of this, the more you can actually make changes too, to creation, to your body, because you understand that all the time your body is flickering in and out of existence. And if you notice that, you can actually change how it's going to flicker back into existence more and more. Uh, we covered some space. Space, yes. <laughs> Non-existent space. <laughs>